Another tool we have to improve Derby's neighborhoods is recently adopted a clean and lean ordinance. We have, please welcome Alderman Art Birkins. Art will explain more about the new, this new ordinance as well as many other legislative actions the Board of Aldermen has taken to move Derby in a positive direction. Welcome, Art. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I was told I was going to speak on Thursday, so um, I guess I'm the silver medalist guy that's up here today, but we'll do our best. Um, I wanted to talk about some of the changes that have occurred this past year, but before we discuss these changes, I wanted to tell a story that demonstrates how hard and sometimes painful changes can be. So indulge me for a couple moments. I lived in California for about a decade. And I love the lifestyle out there. You know, I used to scuba dive through the underwater kelp forest. I used to play beach volleyball after work, and it was a great lifestyle. Something else I enjoyed about California was California fashion. I was one of those guys, I always had sunglasses on my head. You know, I used to wear um, a different assortment of t-shirts and tank tops, and I was one of those guys with the <coughs> van checkerboard sneakers. Um, but one thing that I never owned was a pair of board shorts. Now, for those of you that don't know what board shorts are, it's the swimsuits that uh, surfers wear. They're usually pretty long, and they're very colorful, at least the ones that I like. So I was in BJ's uh, this past summer, and I saw they were having a sale on board shorts. And I thought, wow. Now, I don't know why I thought, wow, I guess maybe I'm in a rut and I want to change. You know, you get in this rut of going to work every day, dropping off the kids, going, coming home, eating dinner, going to meetings. And so I want to change. So I looked at the board shorts, I was picking through them. And one of the things I noticed was there was no mesh liner inside the shorts. And I thought, huh, that's strange. You know, this is a bathing suit, there's no mesh liner. So I did what a lot of people do I picked up my smartphone and I Googled. Do you wear underwear under board shorts? And a couple seconds later, I received an answer. And one of the answers said that, you know, most people don't wear anything under their board shorts. And he went on, which answered my, my second question was, but don't worry, they're usually long enough where nothing is gonna be, shall we say, seen. Okay. So I made my purchase and I went to a pool party that weekend. Success. I was feeling great. Everyone was telling me how cool these board shorts looked, and yeah, you know, I was loving it. Well, after a while, I decided I, I needed to use the restroom, and I, I went in there, and I'm standing up, and I opened the Velcro fly, which is another thing my generation and older probably don't have too much experience with, but I thought it was a cool feature to have on these things. So I'm standing there, and that's when I realized how hard and painful change can be. You see, Velcro has the nasty habit of clamping on to everything that it touches. <laughs> so after a few painful moments, I realized that if I needed to Google something before I wear it, I probably shouldn't be wearing it. <laughs> okay, now to Derby. I told you that. It. Uh, change is hard, sometimes difficult, as I think my story demonstrated. Soon after taking office, we were informed that there may be some issues at O'Sullivan Island. It was painful to close O'Sullivan Island, but it was the prudent action to take. We learned, as the mayor said, that the computers in City Hall were failing. They had obsolete operating programs. Many of them had virus, no antivirus software. It was a challenge, it was painful for us to go to the tax board and say, hey, this needs to be funded. Uh, think about it, we have a city with a hospital and a birthing center in it. Every day people come down to our city hall for birth certificates and we couldn't even do this basic job without jumping through hoops. So the network is now working, the computers were bought. Again, it was painful, but it needed to be done. A chunk of concrete was then placed on one of our tables at a meeting. And admittedly, it was used as a visual aid to demonstrate the parking garage and some of the issues they were facing. It was tough and agonizing to close that garage. Why? We got it inspected and made some temporary repairs. 
given the visual aid that was presented us, we had no other choice. This year, we adopted a stricter blight ordinance and changed the perception of our blight program. The mayor mentioned she established a, a blight subcommittee, and that's their focus. They focus on blight. Um, the, 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 the properties that were, that were blighted, they were actually funded so that we could take some of these down. And the money remained there. The buildings remained there until recently. As the mayor mentioned, two buildings have now been taken down, and there's a list of more that are going to be taken down. I think our blight program is now something to be reckoned with. We implemented a clean and lean program. Uh, property owners are informed when their properties are, be, are in disrepair, and they are, we work with them. They're given the opportunity to address the problems. But if the warnings go unheeded, we'll clean it ourselves and send them the bill. We've authorized an adopt a spot program so that citizens can be involved in beautifying different areas of our city. We've created a dog park advisory board so that the citizens can enjoy this beautiful dog park and the different, and oh, I'm sorry, lost my place, and, and can enjoy this beautiful resource. We entered into a contract with our garbage collector and our, our transfer uh, station. While we're speaking of the transfer station, Derby is almost ready to go and start using solar energy, another accomplishment we've pushed push forward this year. Terry Bradshaw, oops, wait a minute, did I say that or think? <laughs> Scratch that. No, seriously though, we, we, that made a lot of the press, it, 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 went, all, it went viral, uh, the news of Terry Bradshaw and, and that whole thing, but what wasn't mentioned was the great work done in our tax office. Nearly $1.1 million. At the same meeting that we learned about the doings of the tax office, we also finished the sale on East Derby Waterworks for nearly $1.5 million. That didn't get reported, but that was at the same exact meeting that that community of distinctions uh, thing was discussed. Our board acts on suggestions from the great citizens of Derby and from a number of people. This year, longtime resident Red Clinch was memorialized by naming the softball field after him. This idea didn't come from our board, it came from Parks and Rec. What a wonderful tribute to a great man and citizen of Derby. The 9-11 memorial on the green has become a reality. This was brought up by members of our fire department and others in the community. Speaking of the fire department, one of the first things we did as a board was we toured the four different firehouses, and then we made recommendations for capital improvements where, where we could find the funds to do so. Our police department has been great. They do a great job, but one of the things that they did was they worked with us to get signs, signage for school bus crossings where, where they were lacking. They also worked together with our outstanding public works office and uh, a citizen request for a crosswalk so that people could get to and from the football field has become a reality. Was it painful to ask the taxpayers to make improvement to our sewage system? Sure it was. Yet the people of Derby spoke and they realized that we could no longer ignore our infrastructure. Now I began by saying that change is hard and sometimes painful. What I failed to mention is that sometimes change is good. If we tear away the Velcro bureaucracies policies and mindset that have kept our town down for so long, then Derby's greatest days are in its future. In fact, to use a tagline from a song and something that a small parochial school at 14 Seymour Avenue used as their tagline, who managed to stay open despite great odds, the future's so bright you're gonna need shades. Thank you.